Sunday. <laughs> therefore, listen, therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let's put that uh, another way, another translator puts it, so let us get beyond the teaching of the elementary doctrine of Christ. Let us go on unto perfection. William says, continue progressing toward maturity. Philip said, go forward to adult understanding. And Knox says, pass on to our full growth. That's what we're after, isn't it? Not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works, of faith toward God, of the doctrine of baptism, and of laying on of hands, and of resurrection of the dead, and of eternal judgment. Now that is the biblical definition of the very elemental basics of the doctrines of Christ. Right? That's what it said here. Let's read them again. Repentance from dead works. We all know that. Faith toward God. We teach that every week. Doctrine of baptisms, plural. That means not just water baptism. Laying on of hands. We practiced that this morning. Of resurrection of the dead. That there's life after this life. And eternal judgment. That there's accountability. All those are the basics. Now, once you get those, you're supposed to be able to go on. Right? That's what he's talking about. Verse 3 says, This we will do if God permits. Verse 4. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come and then he goes on to talk about the unpardonable sin. If they fall away, you can't renew them again to repentance. Verse 6. But well, we're going to stop there. We're not going to get into that. Maybe another session. I mean, we're going to stop that particular verse reading there. No, this is not the end of the mess. <laughs> Some of you had your purses ready to walk out the door and coats on. Okay. I, I get the hint. It's all right. Hallelujah. Now listen, we learned what the basics were, but now we want to see what is maturity. Uh-huh. Biblical definition. Well, it's right here. We just read it. Amen. We saw the basics. Repentance from dead works, mm-hmm. faith toward God, mm-hmm. doctrine of baptism, yes. laying on of hands, yes. resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. That's the basics. All right. But after that, listen to this now. This is talking about the mature Christian. Well, he's enlightened. Mm-hmm. That means the light has come on inside spiritually. Mm-hmm. He sees as God sees. Okay? He's tasted of the heavenly gift. He's saved. Hallelujah. That's a gift, right? The grace of God. He's made partaker of the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. That means he's got some power. And verse 5. Don't forget this. Some people get down to that one, but then they stop here at verse 5. Has tasted the good word of God. Hallelujah. What does that mean? That means found out that God cannot lie, that when I take a promise of God by faith and lay hold of it by faith, that God performs exactly what he said. I tasted that good word of God. And with it, still in verse 5, the power of the world to come. Amen. The world to come is the heavens, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's what we got to look forward to. Amen. <laughs> You're no longer natural, man. You're supernatural. Amen. Right. Glory. That says here that this is the mature Christian, all right? Mm-hmm. He's enlightened. Okay. He's got the heavenly gift of salvation. Uh-huh. He's a partaker of the Holy Ghost. Uh-huh. Yeah. And... He's skillful in the Word of God. He's tasted the Word of God. And he's tasted the powers of the next world. Ha! That means 
When the doctor says, I'm sorry, I can do no more for you, he lays hold of the Word of God and the power of God and says, thanks, Doc, I appreciate it, but God will take over from here. And walks out of there a healed person. The powers of the world to come. That's exciting. Now, I just want to point out to you, look in 2 Corinthians 1. I am really wanted to know. 2 Corinthians 1. Yeah. I got six minutes. Second Corinthians one. Praise the Lord. Verse twenty two says, He no I'm sorry, who has also sealed us and given the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. Now, the key to that is, if I go to a realtor and I say, I would like to buy this property, and I'm serious about this property, I'm so serious about this property, I'm going to give you some earnest money to show you I'm in business. So take this $5,000 and make my offer. You see what I'm saying? In other words, I got something at stake. And I got something tangible here that shows the other party, hey, he's for real. This is for real. This is not a mind deal. This is not a game somebody's playing. It's for real. Okay? Now, in light of that, verse 22 says, God has sealed you and God has given you the down payment, the earnest of the Spirit in your heart. Yes. But well, that's not good enough. Look over Second Corinthians five. Lord, Lord. Yeah. Second Corinthians five and verse five. Ooh. Now he that hath wrought for us the self same thing is God, who also hath given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. Not this, when he gave us the foretaste of his Spirit. Foretaste. I've got a foretaste of the power of the world to come. Right here, right now, right now yeah. on planet Earth. Yeah. Woo! Woo! Hallelujah. Woo! <coughs> All right, one more place on that. Ephesians 1. Ephesians 1. Ephesians 1, verse 14. Actually, verse 13 says, In whom... You also trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after that you believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Amen. Verse 14 explains it. Which is the earnest of our inheritance Amen. until the redemption of the purchased possession, until we're physically in heaven, a new body. Now, it also, another translator here says, and the Spirit is a pledge of our future heritage. Amen. Way says that Spirit being a pledge and foretaste of our inheritance. William says, who is the first installment of our inheritance. 